Don't despair. Don't despair. A lot of goodness awaits you. Just keep trying. You're a human. Allah knows you're a human being. Allah knows the pressures and the stresses you're going through. Allah knows the environment you're living in. Allah knows the circumstances you're facing more than anyone else. Allah knows the challenges that you have. Allah knows that you're trying to make ends meet. Allah knows everything. Allah knows that you're faltering from time to time. He knows that you're dropping back into the same sin again and again. Each time you regret and say, oh Allah, I'm weak. I'm a human. Forgive me, oh Allah. I'm not doing this out of defiance of you. You are my maker. I have none other than you to forgive me, to have mercy on me, to carry me into the hereafter. But it's my human weakness that makes me fall into. What a beautiful relation. What a beautiful relationship with Allah. When you communicate with him, when you talk to him, when you try your best five times a day, I'm trying. Sometimes people are weak four times, three times, and others will tell them you're no longer a Muslim. Hang on, ignore those people. Do you know why? Because as much as they are trying to discourage you from doing the wrong thing, correct. And they're trying to encourage you to do the right thing, correct. But sometimes the approach is hard and harsh. It may drift you further away. You need to know, even if you have not been praying, the day you start is the day you shall succeed. It's not the end of everything. Are you not breathing? Well, there's hope. Hope for me, hope for you. What do I do? Thank Allah for what he's given me. Focus. Focus upon a day when the Lord will prove his mercy. Have you not heard? He's the most merciful, the most kind, the most compassionate, the most forgiving, the most amazing. That's my Lord. If he made me, Surely he is amazing. I can't wait to meet him. And when I do, I'm convinced he's not just going to throw me aside and punish me and so on. I tried to be a decent person in, in this world. I tried to do good things. I tried. T-R-Y. That's the secret. A loud secret. Not hidden. I tried. And if I tried, subhanAllah, I need to have hope. And if I have hope, what, what will it do to me? It will make me do more and more and more on a daily basis. So perhaps I may not have been that regular with my prayer. I became a little bit more regular, a little bit more regular. It brings about a feeling of warmth in the heart and comfort and contentment to the soul when you're able to worship Allah a little bit more on a daily basis. You're doing one more thing compared to what you were doing yesterday. One more thing. Yesterday I received a mail from a sister telling me, I heard in one of your lectures where you said that try fulfilling Salat al-Tahajjud at least once a month or once a week and see how it changes your life. And she says, I just want to bear witness that I started doing this and it's changed my life. And I know it will. And I know it does. Because Allah promises. When you get up to pray to Allah while the others are asleep, you're not equal to them. You've now arrived at a new level. Don't let it make you feel when they wake up. Listen guys, you guys were asleep. I've arrived on your new level. Not at all. We're not boasting about it. But they may not know or they may know. So what? You cry to Allah. Warm tears. You got up and prayed. Two units of prayer to begin with. Just two. Too much. In fact, you know how it starts. Let me tell you how it starts. It starts with not even getting up for prayer, but setting your clock and getting up at a time when you know that Allah Almighty calls out, saying, who is there asking me? I can give them. Who is there seeking forgiveness? I can forgive them. Who is there repenting so that I can accept that repentance? Just get up and say, oh Allah, I know you're calling out right now when the third of the night remains. And here I am seeking forgiveness. Forgive me. I'm weak. Strengthen me. Grant me the ability to do the right thing. Create a barrier between myself and that which displeases you. Amazing. That was a dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet he did not need it. He made it. Oh Allah, create a barrier between us and that which displeases you. Subhanallah. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. So when we ultimately meet Allah Almighty, we have to meet him with the greatest of hope. And Allah says, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I will treat each one of you the way you thought I was going to treat you. Wow. You look at Allah as a merciful Lord, you be merciful. You look at Allah as one who's just going to punish and he doesn't have any mercy. How dare you do that? It's not good for you or for anyone else. Yes. You need to know about the punishment of Allah. You need to believe in it. You need to know that he has said it. You need to know that he has told people you do this. Yes, you will pay for it. But you also need to know that he has said my mercy outweighs the punishment or my anger by far. So have hope. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too. So please consider sharing and we will bring more videos in the future inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallahu khairan.